Okay, quick video that I'm going to try to get through relatively quickly because there is quite a bit of information on JotForm. JotForm is similar to SurveyMonkey, Wufu Forms, and other online survey slash payment type forms that are available out there. The one thing I like about JotForm is that it's free as long as you have less than 100 submissions per month, whereas I believe Wufu and SurveyMonkey have some limitations on the number of fields that can be on a form, which could be important for some people. I believe SurveyMonkey is only free for up to 10 questions or 10 fields on a form, and I can't remember 100% on Wufu. Whereas JotForm doesn't limit you to the number of fields on a form, they limit you on the number of submissions per month. So JotForm could be a very cost-effective way in which you do survey forms, um, things of that nature. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot in chat form, and by no means am I going to be able to get through it. Just wanted to make you aware of some of the quote unquote cooler features that are available in order to give you a good idea and kind of get you off and running if you've never worked with it before. So when you create a new form, doo -doo -doo. All right, so when you create a new form, you can choose from blank, use template, or import form. If this is your first time using it and you're not 100% sure exactly what you're looking for, maybe start off with the templates to get some inspiration or a good starting point you know, to get working on your form. And for purposes of this video, though, I've created a little blank form that I'm just going to show you really quick. We're going to make a pretend magazine order subscription form. So... Really quick, these are the defaults that show up on the side, but there's also quick tools which are really handy. So let's just do this really quick. Um, all right, and I'm going to go to quick tools. Remember, we're going to make a magazine order form here. And Let's see here, name, address, or name and email address. Um, for the purposes of what we're doing, because we are going to do PayPal integration, we don't actually need their mailing address because PayPal will ask us, but I'm just going to throw it in here just because anyhow. And then I'm going to go down here under payment tools. You'll see there's a number of options available that JotForm works with, PayPal certainly being the most popular. And then another one that's really awesome and I talk about in another blog post is Stripe. Um, I absolutely love Stripe and I'm not doing a sales pitch for them here, but I want to say quickly why I like them so much. They allow you to process credit cards, including American Express, with no monthly or annual fees and their pricing is incredibly competitive. So if you're looking for a way to accept credit cards from customers, definitely check out Stripe. But anyhow, for the purpose of this video, we're going to just work with PayPal. So we're just going to go ahead and say we're going to put a PayPal form in here. Then you're going to put in your PayPal email address. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to throw your email in there. Do we need the shipping address? Which currency? Which language for checkout? Then we're going to go ahead and hit next. And then here you have a couple of different options that are available. Do you want to sell products, sell subscriptions, collect donations, la da la da, there you go. So now we're going to click next. So we're going to create a one year magazine and we're going to say $24.95. We could put an image URL if we wanted to. You could make this required product, which I don't know why you do that, but whatever. Um, and then let's, we're going to add one more here really quick. Right. Save this product. Next. Would you like to offer a coupon? Right. Coupons are um, case sensitive. In this case, I'm going to say 33% off. And I'm going to select over here which items this applies to. All items. Save coupon. Next. Finish. All right. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. So really quick, I'm going to say, you know what? I actually want this product field to be here. So you can drag and drop information in here. And let's say I don't like this submit button the way that it is. So I'm going to go here to properties. 
and I'm gonna change the button text to order because they're gonna be ordering, right? We could use an image instead of a button. How would you like the button aligned? I'm gonna say I want it in the center of the form. And do we want a button style? Um, yes, we're gonna go with the simple Carolina blue. All right, that is not simple Carolina blue. That is still gray. All right, <laughs> let's pick a different one. All right, how about green apple? And apparently it does not want to play nice. Um, normally though, it will actually change the color of the button to one of these options that they have. And I'll just, all right, I give up on this button issue. So <laughs> we're just gonna leave this be. Okay, so we've made our little form, and then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to go to here to set up an embed, and you wanna set up two different things on here. You want to redirect, oh, you know what? Let's do this really quick. Um, I'm gonna pick some, I wanna show you an image really quick. Uh, hmm. All right then. We, what we need is an image URL. We need a URL for an image. It should be so easy. All right, we're gonna just forget that too because apparently that doesn't want to work either. <sighs> okay, so you could add your logo to a form, and I'll show you when we're done. Um, one that I have that has a logo. So the next two things you want to set up, you want to set up your thank you page. You have a default. You can send them to a custom page on your website, redirecting them, or you could craft your own fun little thank you message. And you can put in whatever you want in here, including an image. If you have the image URL, of course, which I was just trying to grab one to show you how we could do that, but Google doesn't want to cooperate apparently, or maybe it's my computer. So you'd like to set up the thank you page. And the other thing you definitely want to do too is you want to set up the email alerts. And there's two different email alerts you can set up. One, notification. That is an email that will be generated to someone probably internally that you'd want to be notified that a form has had been submitted by someone, in this case for the magazine subscription. So if you click on notification, you can change your subject line to whatever you'd like. I typically edit it a little bit and use some of the form fields here. Um, so fill that out however you want. And then down here, lower right, reply to and recipient settings. So here, since your form has a, a name field on it, we're gonna say full name. And then reply to email, they also had to fill out their email address on the form. So this way, when the form comes in, it comes in from, in this case, let's say Michelle Mangin, and instead of jot form, which is what it will do otherwise by default. And then if you wanted to reply to the email submission that comes in by having email on this form, when you hit the reply, it will automatically pull through the email address from the person who filled out the form. So that is super handy. And then down here, what you wanna do, lower right, recipient email. You're gonna put your email address or maybe someone else within your organization, put their email address here and that way they'll be the person that gets the notification setting or the notification email. And you can actually set up multiple notifications. So if you wanted multiple people to be notified and maybe they need each subject line different or something, you can do that too. Second email notification would be the autoresponder. What the autoresponder does is this generates an email to the person who filled out the form. So of course, definitely change your subject line because that'd be really funky for the person that placed the magazine order to get an email that has subject line autoresponder one. Let's change that. And then again, go down here to the reply to and recipient settings at the bottom. And then of course, um, sender name, you would put your name because email would be coming from you. Sender email, you can just leave that as it is and then um, Reply to email would be the email address that the person placing the order could hit reply and get reply to. And then recipient email, you're gonna fill that out because they have to fill their email out on the form. You're gonna say their email. That way when they fill out the form, they'll get an email from you 
with your reply to email address and it will be sent to the email address they filled out on the form. All right, so go ahead and hit finish. Then really quick, now we're ready to test this particular form. So here is the particular link which you could use in an email or maybe on a blog post and then you fill all of this out. So let's just do this really fast. Yay! All right, and then go down here to fill out the purchase. Remember the codes are case sensitive. And then you can see how it changed the price and everything. And then once I click the order, it's going to redirect me to PayPal to fill out my PayPal information, which of course, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to do. So now we know we would go through this entirely, especially recommend it if you are actually charging money for something so that you can make sure it really does indeed work. Okay, so I promised I would show you a form that has a logo on it. All right, team capacity form. Let's go ahead, do this. So I'm gonna grab, so you see here how I have my logo file is on there. So whoever fills out this form, uh, I might have just grabbed the wrong URL. No. So you can get it customized a little bit so it looks a little bit more fancy, fancy um, with branding and everything like that. Um, and you can also, one thing I forgot to mention earlier in the video is you can require certain fields to be filled out. Those fields are indicated by the red stars. So if someone has to fill out a particular field on the form, be sure to do that, which the way you do that, I'll just show you really quick. Um, click on the field that you'd like to be required. Click the little tool icon and then just click here, required. And see the little star now shows up. I'm gonna save this, come back over to the live form, refresh it, and now you see the red star shows up next to this field. And so there you are. Um, again, I tried to cover a lot of different things in a relatively short period of time. Here's an example of a button that's a different color, um, which is handy. All right, so there you are.